Norco as a company is not just my company, it's not just the farmer's company, it's everybody's company. Because everyone who purchased it is a part of the company. So it becomes our, our Norco. We've been farming on this property since uh, 1897, milking dairy cows and supplying milk to Norco all that time. And there's so much of that heritage that goes into our product, the quality that we produce and the effort that we all go to to make sure that that milk is of the best standard. There's just this something special around a co-op and especially that old traditional co-op, one member, one vote, is so unique and so honest that it's just fantastic. Sit. Your co-op works for your farmers. Everything you put into it is actually staying in your community. All your profits are going back to your farmers. Norco realises that everybody has to farm in a different way and they respect that, that everybody's an individual. For you to be able to just choose how you want to do that is really important and I don't think that you could do that with anybody but Norco. Norco has got to this place where everybody knows that Norco is the one that look after their farmers and now the farmers actually want to come over to Norco. They can see that it's a great place to be. We wanted to have that contract with Norco. They've assisted us and bent over backwards to help us get set up. It's homegrown, Australian owned company and they're there to um, back you up and help you out. That is what makes the difference, is that those directors that are in there, they realise that when there is a flood or a drought or whatever, they know how that feels. And it's not just about the monetary side of it, but the emotional support and all of that stuff. Norco is able to offer that to, to their farmers. When you buy a bottle of Norco branded milk, you are 100% supporting dairy farmers. The person down the road that actually gets up at 4.30 to get the cows in and milk them 365 days of the year. Many other farmers in Australia chose to sell off their cooperative. We actually hung in and actually are now actually starting to see the benefits where people actually see that a co-op can actually make a difference and run well. A co-op can expand and actually deliver opportunities to other communities too. It's been here a long time. Um, I suspect we'll be here for a long time and that's Obviously thanks to the people who purchase our product. We'll be stronger if we are together now. We'll be stronger. Right, um, so hopefully you're awake. Um, and I think you might get the sense of it. Um, those people were given no scripts. That was just two days of filming on several different farms. There's about six versions of that um, piece. Some of them are actually for social media. Some of them are actually for our um, business partners. Um, we take to China or we actually uh, even do the retails in Australia. Interestingly enough, when we played the, um, another version of that, um, which is far more about um, one particular farmer, the retailers cried. Uh, and that's what provenance is about, is if you can create, and the word today is about con con connectivity, if I can say it properly, um, connection, connectivity, you've got to find a way to actually connect. And so this is really, um, I've put, I'm not going to talk too much about the Norco profile, um, you can find that on our webpage, but I really wanted to sort of send, um, give you a sense of, as an example, how we treat that provenance piece really, really seriously, because we've, as a company that's 120, um, almost 123 years old, We've, we're looking after that legacy that others have, have left um, for us to actually do something with. And I, and I personally take that really, really seriously. And so one of the things that's uh, really important in a co-op is, uh, especially a co-op, and I would say this about any business, is the values that you actually bring to that, uh, that business. You know, the values that we see about tre treating in a co-op, that there's seven principles and they're about um, being fair, being democratic, you educate people, you uh, are part of the community, you're transparent, you're open. There's a whole range of things that you need to actually be able to uh, prove to the broader community when you're a co-op that that's actually what you live by. Um, some organisations um, develop uh, corporate uh, governance um, strategies. We actually live those strategies every day. Um, but for us, it was about um, the retailers um, 
and the consumer actually need a proposition in the market. We needed to have a proposition in the marketplace, so we decided that we would actually build, we would not necessarily go down that, uh, that corporatisation path, uh, path and actually capitalise the value for the business of one generation. We, we believe that um, our directors would actually build a, an organisation that could actually live on multiple generations for multiple, uh, many, many years uh, to come. Um, so, um, and that proposition has got to be about our, our owners, the farmers, because that's why we exist. That's that, that's the single reason we exist. If our farmers didn't produce the milk that we actually um, need to um, um, deliver to the consumers every day, Norco doesn't exist. And so that's fairly well entrenched within our business. That doesn't mean to say that they're the only reason we do things, but that's why we exist um, is for those 220 farms to actually um, get a, a fair return for their product. But the, one of the challenges in a co-op is that most people think they're actually um, almost benevolent societies, and I couldn't tell you that's further from the, that's, that's further, that couldn't be further from my uh, perception about how we actually run Norco. It's a very much a commercially dri uh, driven business. We have very commercially focused uh, individuals within our business. But if you don't fit that um, cooperative ethos where uh, farmers are actually um, the, um, the very important part of our business and you live to the values, then you won't last very long. You're weeded out. Uh, and, and the other part is about our relationships. One of the good things about Norco is we have multiple um, relationships, not only with our farmers and our, and our employees, but also uh, and the consumers, but with our business partners. So we find business when we find business partners, we're looking for partners that are actually there to actually build on our, our business proposition uh, for the benefit of, of everyone in, in our business. So this is trying to actually give you a sense of um, how we've created a provenance story that we think actually works for Norco. Uh, and so provenance needs to, as, as we said, it needs to create that uh, connection or that connect, con connectivity. I've got to get that word right. Um, and so for me, it's about being authentic. As you, um, and I think we heard a couple of speakers earlier in another session, and, and I can't, we're not saying about you guys weren't this, but um, there was one or two farmers in that. And one was a, a young lady from Wine, uh, and um, she was really authentic. You believed everything she said. Some, you can't, I, I'm a great believer, you can't fake being authentic. And if you think about the consumers, they really want to see when you put something on social media or on TV, they really want to understand that you're authentic and, and that's something that they can actually believe in. But it's also about being trans transparency. So the new buzzword sometimes is about when someone puts a lens on you, what do they see? Well, we want to see multiple layers of um, that we're actually authentic, that we live up to what we, um, people expect and that people back our story up. So um, the consumer wants to understand that they're also a partner in this. So if they're going to pay a higher price for a branded product of Norco milk, of whatever ch uh, choice they choose, they need to, f they need to feel if they're paying that, um, that reward that then they're actually, that reward's going back to the farmer. And which we, if you think about our social media platform, we can cons constantly actually get that question, what's the farmer's milk price? Am I actually supporting the farmer? And I think the other piece is about helping our farmers understand that when people pay a higher price for their product, that, that, that we understand that they actually have expectations. So, so there's this merging into um, the farmer and the consumer are actually on the same page. So how do we create that connection around that, um, that loyalty that farm, um, consumers are actually prepared to high, um, pay a higher price, but also the consumer actually expects us to actually do the things we, we should be doing around animal welfare, around sustainable environment, all those things that need to be um, backing up our story. So then you've, got to then you've got to create the value. <coughs> so it's not necessarily about creating a new product. From our perspective, anyone can go, I can give a brief and anyone can go and create a new product um, and we can put it in the market. But for us, the product is, um, we are the product. Every, everyone that works at Norco is a product. Every farmer that, that suppli supplies Norco is a product in its own right. And so what our perspective is about um, supporting our farmers. So we, want, we're not, we don't only want to support our farmers, we want to make sure that everyone knows that we support our farmers for the right reasons. It's not necessarily about um, racing off and giving them a higher milk price. Sometimes it's actually how, you know, if they've got a, a, uh, an issue, a flood or a drought or uh, something that's going on on their farm, how do we actually help them resolve that issue and actually support them in that process? Um, so we also support our people through education. And I'm talking about not only about farmers, but our, um, the story um, that we... Um, support people in furthering their education careers at Norco and that doesn't necessarily mean sending them off to university, sometimes that means sending them 
to events or um, doing in-house training that is actually over and above what they would normally do in their normal uh, work life. We support our community. Uh, that's a, um, a really... Um, it's difficult in some respects because the community have great expectations and the, and the broader Norco actually goes as a business on the east coast of Australia, the harder it gets. But one of the great um, things that we actually get involved in is um, some of the U3, U3A or um, Probus Club meetings and that. You know, I would do probably about 10 of them a year and somewhere up to 200 to 250 people on the, in, in our part of the world where we actually do speeches and we talk to the older people and we get them involved in what we're actually talking, um, talking about at Norco or doing at Norco. And that's actually a reflection on we value a past generation that's actually been supporting the business. So it's not, and so it's building this proposition in the marketplace that we're not one layer, we're multiple layers um, within our business. And, and you know, that's, a, that's based on the, the story, the same reason that when um, three people actually stood under a tree in a little place called Clunes in 1892 to have a conversation, how do we actually push back on the big corporates ripping us off? It's actually about us as an organisation valuing that everyone has a contribution and we can act working together brings us better, brings a better outcome. And I think that quite often gets lost in Australia today that um, we actually are too, too keen to um, sell off. I know there's been conversation about foreign investment, but there's no reason why we can't keep parts of Australia in a, in a single entity or have different ownership structures within businesses to keep us uh, relatively pure. And I think um, in many instances we actually forget about the fact that uh, the forebearers that brought us here um, come here for very good reasons. But it's also about bringing... Uh, and we, uh, so we, we've got to build this proposition around uh, what consumers are actually looking for in, in general. And, and so, we, so the ads that we actually um, pl play on TV, um, they're playing on a, on a constant basis. Probably not in our heartland. Interestingly enough, we don't play them necessarily in our heartland all the time, but on the fringes of where we're expanding uh, in our business. And we've moved from traditionally the northern New South Wales, southeast Queensland, um, to as high as Cairns and down as far as you'll even get uh, Norco Milk in Starbucks in Sydney these days. And it's not in Sydney, in Melbourne, sorry. So Sydney and Melbourne. But... Um, one of the things that we've um, really struck a chord with is social media. So, um, and this is getting back to new startup organisations around how do you actually connect and the way they connect is through social media. So bringing young people into our, our business, we have a young guy called Ben Menzies who does our marketing and social media work. He is just fantastic. I, I don't even uh, profess to have those skills of any great nature, but uh, the new, a new generation of people coming through build, are building, uh, able to build a provenance story in a, in a sector that I couldn't even dream of. And, and so that's for people on the move that you know, not, not everyone's sitting down watching TV. There's a whole generation of people that are actually frequently what, uh, looking at their phones or uh, having a uh, look at what's going on. But then, uh, and lastly, it still happens in the store, but not to the level it did. It happens more from our perspective around how we sell our proposition to the major retailers and making sure that they've got the right story um, going, going through the business. But the, the other thing is, if you're going to do provenance well, you've actually got to have good product. And so what we do is, um, the mantra of Norco when they first started was, was all about quality. We would, we would produce the best butter we possibly could to um, meet the consumer's needs. So ours is about milk and producing the best milk that we possibly can. Um, and there's a whole range of ways to do that. You can produce... Um, we've moved, uh, moved more into, if any of, you, any of you have actually seen in Victoria more recently, we, we've advertised for organic milk something that I've got very involved in. Whilst I'm not an organic farmer, uh, the, the desire for our um, consumers to uh, source organic milk for their, um, for their tables is phenomenal. Um, so we've identified um, significant opportunity in the organic sector and one of the challenges was for us to actually learn around the organic sector and understand the organic sector and the culture within the organic sector. Um, my belief is too many people think sometimes you can take something and just part it on somewhere else that it works. Um, the organic sector is something that is unique in its own right and it has a whole set of attributes that I don't believe most people understand. And the last one, my last slide, if I get this right. Well, sorry, I didn't click on all those slides. <laughs> sorry, I was reading that. Oh, I did that once before. Um, but the last bit is, and you heard this, and <laughs> interesting enough, I feel this has been done to death today, but um, one of the things that Norco's been built on is the toil of hard work. There's been no easy path that Norco's been on, and like every organisation, we have our ups and downs, 
but the trust that we have built with the people that um, work with us um, by our product is just amazing. And the stories we get on a constant basis around how people actually value our brand and what we do on a daily basis is, is just uh, phenomenal. So um, I don't think anyone should actually lose sight that building trust um, is the most important thing we could possibly do to build a brand. Thanks very much. Thank you.